Hello and welcome again to Creepy Cutie Crafty. Welcome again to yet another Friday Fabric Fumble with me, Heather. Hi guys, how are you doing this week? It's the end of a long week and it feels like it's been a very, very long week this week. Um, so many things have happened. All the stuff going on in the news and we've got all the stuff going on at work. My gosh, it's all coming at once. I think we're, we do a holiday, I think. Yay! Anyway, I've got a couple of um, tasks I'm going to be trying to get on with today. Um, I'm going to try and do three um, sort of 20 minute segments rather than two 30 minute segments because it seems to be, it drags a little th a bit, I think. You can tell me down in the comments whether or not you agree with that. Um, but I think I'm going to try and do more but less in each Friday Fabric Fumble, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Ah. Whatever, eh? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to be doing a bit more to this one. I started this one last week. You saw me do the inside area and the uh, bit around the outside. I've added some red thread to the centre of these X's and between the, um, the, the stickies there. I, I really like how that's turned out. And I'm going to add um, a little bit of uh, between the, the stitch weaving with a different colour. And I'm thinking what colour did I want it to be? Did I want it to be another shade of red, a pink? Did I want it to be a white? Um, I don't know. I was looking at white using my Perle number eight here, but I think as the outside area is more red and the inside area is more white, I think I want to keep the white out of this bit. Um, I might use some of that later, I don't know, but I thought I might try using one of these, one of my Sashiko um, threads. I've got some red ones over there as well, but I'm having a look at these ones. And I thought this one might be quite nice on there. What do you think? Does that does that appeal? It might look a bit sort of Christmas cardy, but I don't really mind that. Um, I'm just gonna have a quick check with the other ones, see what uh, see what they they look like on there as well. You'll recognise these from the the Boro. Um, task that me and Squinks did a while ago. That's quite a nice one. It's kind of subdued. I'm thinking maybe that one actually. I'll have a look at the others. Um, that one, I do like it, but I think it's a bit too contrasty maybe. Yeah, that's a bit too contrasty. You all know what I mean by contrasty, obviously. You can see it yourself. <laughs> this is nice, but I think it might be too close to the, the central white yep. and finally this one which i have not even used it this one's a completely new skein that i've not even not even opened i like that but i think it might be a bit too yeah a bit too much of a pop i do like it though maybe for next time so it's between this one and find the thread and this one. What do we think, guys? Yes, once again, I'm working on my lap. What do you think? Hmm. This one, I like it, but I think it may be a bit too pale. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with my original idea and use this one. I can always use this for the next one, can't I? And uh, yeah, these are quite thin, so I'm gonna try and make this a sort of, a, a, a smaller color, if that makes sense, rather than a big pop. So I'm just going to get myself a nice, decent size skein of that, so a decent size length of that, rather. I keep saying skein, and I don't mean, actually mean skein. You guys can correct me on that, I'm sure. Anyway, I'm going to put that there, and get my needle. Yeah, I did start this last week, I did quite a bit of it off screen as well. Um, but uh, you can let me know what you think of it down in the comments. And also, of course, whilst you're down there, remember to like and subscribe and do all those lovely things that help a channel like mine to grow. Going to get on with these things, haven't we? Got to get ready for that, our Christmas crafts and that Halloween crafts, which I keep mentioning. Um, but I am actually going to get started on one of those today, which will be nice, won't it? Oops, sorry, punching the camera, as is now traditional. I'm going to keep saying that until I get bored. <laughs> and I don't get bored of things like that. So... I'm going to start it, ooh, where should I start it? I'm going to start it here. Now it's going to make sense once you see where it goes in. Actually, I could do it sort of alternating uh, colours, couldn't I? I'm going to do it there, I think, actually. 
so to make it a little bit easier so i could use both greens couldn't i really i could do like a interlacing so what i'm doing is i'm just going through the red threads and hopefully not getting it stuck on there oops daisy on the mechanism there normally i hold it by the mechanism but by the the locking thing here just so it you know doesn't get caught so much but just didn't on that occasion and then oops daisy through there maybe i should go with the back of my needle first these aren't particularly sharp needles. I think it's a, a tapestry needle, so it's not too bad. Yes. I think I like that. What do you think? And I'm thinking maybe on the return, maybe I can do that with the other colour that I, I rejected over there. We'll see. Um, look in a second. Try not to stab through the, the stitches that are on there already because that would not be good. But I think that works quite well. It is a little bit Christmas cardy, but I, I kind of like it. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting because I've got all of these corner bits here. So. I think it's going to be like this. And then up here, I am making this up as I go along, so it may work, it may not. It may look too busy, again, it may not. We shall see. I think that kind of works. What do you think? Oops, it is. There it goes. Yeah, I like that. I was a bit confused as to how to do the corners, and I think it works like that. It looks sort of uh, sort of like a soft square. I think it works. Yes. Hopefully my voice will hold out. I'm still tangling with the uh, the very last remnants of this cold. So if I fall into a coughing fit, that's why. Yes. I do like this weaving bit of doing um, chicken scratch. I like how the patterns sort of emerge from whatever you're making. It's a it's an interesting. Um, interesting process, I think. And then, ah, so this one's going to go the opposite way. So, let's see how we do with this one. Oh, so it's not that difficult. So, yeah, this one's going to be like this. So, that means the next one will be overlapping that, I think. So maybe that could be interesting in a in a different green or a different contrasting colour. I don't know. We'll see when we get there, won't we? And of course I can put the other thread going in the opposite direction, can't I? I can have it sort of going under or over the threads I've got here to make it sort of merge in with the, the pattern that's already there. That's going to be a fascinating way of doing it. And once this is done, I'm going to be using this um, as part of my, um, oh gosh, what's it? My crazy quilt bag. I'm calling it crazy quilt. It's, it's a, it's going to be all sorts of things mishmashed in together, but I'm going to use some of the, um, chicken scratch gingham pattern type pieces as almost like patches. And then I've also got some 
um, like denim patches that I've made that I'm going to be sort of whacking in there and seeing how it turns out. It could be fun. I think it's going to be fun. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Same as ever. What would you do with uh, patches like this? What would you, where would you go with it? Or would you just keep them as samples to show what you can do? What would you do? Let me know. Right, so I'm back at the beginning again. And I'm thinking that maybe... I do it in a contrasting colour. So the other colour that I picked earlier was this one. Maybe I can have that going through. It's like a lighter colour. Let's have a look, see if that would work. That could be quite interesting. Or maybe the darker one. I'm going to go with this one because it's contrasting it's it's different but it's not so different that it clashes because I want it to be sort of simple in many ways I want it to be don't want it to be too too jarring so I'm just going to tie this one off on the bike and keep this for my scrap jar and get some of this out. There we go. I do like the way the Sashiko threads work. They're very, they're not glossy, but they are very smooth. And I, I do appreciate that in, in my threads. There we go. So, if that starts there, then what I'll do is I'll make it easy for myself and start there. That way I'll know where I've got to be on this. There we go. And with any luck, it'll start at the, face, the same place. There we go. one under the next under and then over now what should I do here I'll do the same that I did with the other ones this is going to be a bit of a weird one I think underneath the uh, other green thread and then through here and that one was um, over so this one's going to be under I'm only saying it aloud so I can remember, so you just, for the next 10 minutes you're just going to listen to me saying over, under, over, under. That one was over, so this one's going to be under. Otherwise I will forget where I am. That was under, so this one is over. Oopsie daisy. And then we've got this situation here, so... goes in there, that goes in there, through here, do a little loop to loop, and then 
true. Keep the loop the loops on this side of there. That goes under. Oops, it is under there. with it. So that one was over, so this one is under. I hope you guys are making, making those. <laughs> oh dear. It's got a bit twisted there, but I don't mind that too much. It's a, uh, as I say, just me mucking around and trying things out. Yes. So that was under, so this one is over. Through here, loop it a loop. Under, then over. I know you can barely see it, but it makes a difference, I think. It makes a difference to me, anyway. Over, under. Do a quick loop. And, uh, and that's the end. I'm thinking, do I want to add another row of something around the outside as like a finisher, or shall I leave it as it is? I'm going to do a row of white X's around there, and then I'll leave it. I think that'll be it. There we go. Let's get a little bit of this white going around the outside. There it is. I'm just going to do like a row of X's in the... Ooh, I think I'll do it in the red squares this time, because that'll be interesting, for me anyway. And yes, I am back on my sofa, under my lovely um, pumpkin blanket. I do wash this blanket, you know, I don't just keep wearing it week on week. <laughs> it's um, it's one of my favourite ones, though, because it's nice and snug and warm. And the uh, weather is changing over here in the UK. It's very, very um, cold now it's getting quite bitter on some days especially with the damp in the air that we're getting i don't suppose you saw the news but we've had sort of areas that have flooded and areas that have had a uh, emergency situations arising but overall we're doing okay i think anyway um better than some parts of the world anyway. yeah everything seems to be getting a lot more extreme now doesn't it it's a bit of a, a weird one Anyway, 
yeah so as i say we're gearing up towards the the, the holiday season we're gearing up for halloween and we're gearing up for for christmas and i was thinking what kind of traditions do you guys have for christmas and halloween i don't mean um oh, what sort of traditions you do that are the same as everybody else do you you know dress the christmas tree and all that sort of stuff i think everybody who celebrates christmas dresses the christmas tree everybody who celebrates halloween puts out pumpkins and things um i mean when it comes to Halloween, I'm going to be doing, hopefully, some pumpkin carving. That would be fun. Um, but that, that is also on the 31st, is the day that I am going to be going to um, the Creative Craft Show. So I don't know how much Halloween decorating I'm going to be get, able to get done this year. But we'll see how we go. Um, it should be fun either way. Um, but what I mean is, what kind of additions do you have that you've made up yourself so with you and your family so for my family we always say that you have to have had breakfast um, before you can open your first present the tree um, some some years we sort of say you can't do anything until after you've had lunch but I know that some families is oh let's just get down downstairs in the morning open all the gifts and have the excitement and that's it but uh, you know, my parents used to be quite strict about it. Actually, Vita, um, I grew up in a, a Christian family, um, and uh, it would be very much a case of we'd come downstairs in the morning, get ready to go to church, go to church for half an hour, an hour, whatever, um, say hi to friends there, and do all the things that you need to do, then have lunch, then do the washing up, and then you're allowed to do, to open your gifts, and it had to be, everything was done before you were allowed to open your gifts, which I think is fair enough, but when you're a child and you're so excited to see all these lovely things wrapped under the tree, it kind of does feel a bit, a bit too much sometimes, but you know, everyone's different. Obviously, we had our stockings that we'd open um, first thing in the morning, but it was very much a case of you had to do everything together, otherwise my parents would get a bit annoyed. Um, but yeah. However, as I say, um, my family now, me, my husband and, and Squinks, we don't celebrate Christmas quite the same way. So... We celebrate other parts of the season as well. Just, you know, the, the, the pre-Christian um, parts of the season, which, you know, I, you could argue that um, actually all the uh, other pagan or um, whatever um, traditions were made up after um, paganism was reasserted later in, you know, in the 20th century, that's fine, you know, you believe what you want to believe, but we, we don't sort of celebrate the Yule, but we do like to celebrate it, you know, that, that, the, the winter solstice, the winter solstice, because it's fun, um, and so we celebrate the 21st or the 22nd of December by having and you're going to have to go with me on this one. We are a family that is very much powered by the power of puns. We have what we call Brinner, which is breakfast for dinner. If any of you have ever watched Scrubs, the TV show that's, you know, the comedy TV show, it's based on that. So the idea is we have breakfast for dinner, which we call Brinner, and we celebrate it on Yule. So it is Yule, Brinner. Yeah. So we find out sort of different breakfasts from around the world. We quite often wind up having like American style pancakes, but we do also have like the full English breakfast or the full Irish breakfast, all sorts of stuff like that. And then we have that in the evening whilst watching sort of pre-Christmas films. So what kind of uh, traditions do you guys have like that? The other thing we also do is on um, Christmas Eve, or no, actually on New Year's Eve, Quite often we will set up a pulled pork joint, like a big pulled pork joint, ready to roast in the evening so that as midnight comes in, we have a big sort of 
joint of slow cooked pulled pork that tastes absolutely amazing. Um, and then we freeze the rest in little, little parcels so we can have little bits of pulled pork for the rest of the month or a couple of months actually. And we use it in things like soups and uh, sandwiches and all sorts of things like that. Um, so it makes it sort of last a little longer. Nothing goes to waste, eh? Anyway, so that's my 20 minutes on that. I think that's looking quite good. I'll finish that off screen and you'll probably see it when I use it for my, my patchwork bag. So I'm going to put this on the side. I'll be back in a second. Right, so this is part of what I'm doing for my setup for Christmas and Skinks will be helping me with this in the near future. Um, I've got this little board because I'm going to be using my fabric scissors. I don't want to cut through my, um, my blanket because I want my blanket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of these old pairs of jeans. Now, having done the borrow thing previously, I asked some friends if they could donate old pairs of jeans, which is what they did for the, the borrow uh, task that we did. And I've got a lot of jeans left over. Um, I have a project lined up to use these probably close to Christmas, if not the new year. But in the meantime, I'm going to use a little bit of these to do some Christmas card type things. Now, last year, if you remember, we made the lino printed Christmas cards and uh, we did the little cat with the Santa hat. I'll put some pictures up on the screen here if I can find some. But this year, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to cut out some like squares of denim in different patches and then I'm going to use my uh, sashiko threads or my my DMC number eight to just do little patterns on them um, snowflakes or trees or whatever and I'm going to put them as an insert into um, a Christmas card I might even do some reusing of Christmas cards from previous years I don't know and then send this off to the family I think I might do them so they can be turned into like Christmas tree ornaments or something like that I don't know we shall see anyway so I'm only going to get started on the first one just to see how it turns out I'm going to do a couple of small squares I'll start with the black here and again, I'm not being precious about this. So I spent like a week and a half pulling apart all these jeans and uh, things. I try to keep the edges as much as possible because I want to have that sort of patterning from the folds and so on. There's also quite a few that have pockets on them, like this one. But inside the pockets, you can see there's a big gradient difference in color. So I'm keeping those for other things as well. Uh, just put that on the side so I don't cut it by accident. And I'm going to cut oops, easy, a little bit off the end here. Like I say, I'm not being precious about this. I will be using some templates for the finished bits once I've done them. But you can see with this, the um, bottoms of the jeans have fallen apart. So I'm just going to snip that back. I can use that for something else. Hold on. I haven't ironed these and I kind of feel like I maybe should have ironed them, but I'm not that way inclined at the moment. <sighs> but I, I will be setting up for an iron later in uh, in the week because I need to and all the bits that I'm cutting off will be used something else so there you see where that edge is it's a, a big difference in in the gradient there so I'm going to keep that like that um, and I'm going to just start sticking on there and I will do the same with oops let's see if we can get them about the same size ish I'm going to do that one there. And these part pieces can be used to make composite squares as well. So, like I say, nothing's getting wasted. And Squinks will be joining me on this task at some point, but as it's a Friday fabric fumble, I'm doing it all by myself just for today. So I've got myself two squares there. I'm not going to draw anything down. I'm going to wing it because I like to live dangerously. Um, get my sashiko needles, my tulip sashiko needles out. 
I know I'm saying Sashiko wrong, but my brain is automatically programmed to say Sashiko rather than Sashiko. But I, I can live with that, and I'm hoping you guys can live with that too. I do try. I think I'm going to go with that one, just so that I can get nice straight lines. So let's start with green, and I think I'm going to start on the black over here. Yes. So this is going to be a vaguely Christmas tree shaped pattern, I think. I've got my palm thimble over there and I've got my leather thimble as well, but we shall see how we go. Yes. Let me know at the end, uh, do you think this mixing up of tasks works better or not so much? Let me know. Okay, so one thing I've got to remember is these needles are very, very sharp. I know all needles are sharp, but sashiko needles seem to be extra sharp to me. I don't know quite why that is. Right. I've been washing quite a bit of the green wrapper. I'm going to try and use their process because I don't know quite what I'm doing with Sashiko needles still. I'm still very much an amateur. Sorry, I just realised I was doing quite a lot of that off screen. Must do better. Mm -hmm. See, I'm still so used to doing it in this kind of position. I'm going to try using the palm thimble again. technique. I'm going to have to get used to it though because it's definitely not naturalistic in its positioning for me if you know what I mean. You know, the more I do the better I'm going to get. Same with everything. Oof. Right, so that's the top. Um, again, I'm doing it off screen. Sorry guys. There is a little bit of stretch to this um, fabric, which isn't altogether helping things, but we shall see how we go. Yes, sorry for the, the silence. I'm concentrating that hard that I keep forgetting to talk. Oops. I also keep forgetting where the camera is. I'm very sorry, I keep doing this the time. So you get a good look at all my scrappy fingers.
corners on this. I think it's working quite nicely. It's a bit bibbly bobbly, but again, if you can live with it, I'm sure I can live with it. <laughs> What do you think? I quite like that. And it's not gonna be super 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 detailed, but I think I I think I like that. I'm gonna do the outside edge first so I know where the limit is. So it's about about there, I'd say. It's a bit really wobbly, but it's fine. I want to try moving my palm thimble to the other finger because I've been told that it does work better on the index finger sometimes. So I'll give that a try. I'm glad this is my first one. I'm making all my mistakes on this one. Uh, and then we can see how we go on the next one. So that one there. a bit easier yeah definitely interesting I think I liked it because with the um I had it on the, the middle finger I was doing so I had it like that and I had this finger and I was sort of curling it back which is really uncomfortable but if I have it on here I'm using this one I can use this finger just to guide ah, so there we go I am learning as I'm doing it's all really good so yeah, um, so yeah, let me know down in the comments what do you think of my efforts here. <laughs> I am um, still a complete beginner, I'm still learning. One day maybe I'll be good enough to call myself an expert, but that's certainly not today. Maybe it would be work a bit easier if I had a shorter needle for this one, I don't know. My stitches are a little bit uneven. But, uh, there we go. As I say, I am learning. I think I'm going to do a quick few stitches just going down there to straighten that up a little bit. I'm going to be covering this with other stitches anyway. And this uh, fabric is thin enough that I can work just like this. For a few stitches. Yeah, that's better. And then back through. I mean, that's a nice sort of suggestion of a tree. What do you think? I like that. So I don't think I'm going to add anything more here. I might add like a bucket sort of shape down here in red or blue or something like that at the start at the top maybe I had some other patterns going around but I like that so far um, and I will just 
send this through a few threads. groove there so I don't lose my needle. <laughs> that would not be a good idea. And then I'm going to get, oh what should I get? I'm going to get some purple. Got it. With this one I'm going to do a knot on the end because I think what I'm going to do with this is some French knot. So mixing Sashiko style and Western style. Is it Western? I don't know. You can correct me in the comments. <laughs> Again, feel free to fill that comment section with all the comments about how badly I'm doing so I can do better for next time. Yay! I think definitely I needed to use a smaller needle for this though. But it's very good for doing straight, straight lines, but not quite so good for doing details and things. Oh, maybe I can use some bullion knots to do like garlands and things. What do you reckon to that idea, guys? I might have to try that in a bit. I've never done a bullion knot, funnily enough. So I'm just going to do this quickly and then have a go at doing maybe a, a couple of bullion knots to make some like tinsel type stuff. So yeah, what other kind of traditions do you guys have for your um, holidays? I know that not everybody celebrates the Christian um, calendar and there's, there's Hanukkah and there's, uh, well, as we say, Yule, there's all sorts of other um, celebrations as well that go on around, around the world. But um, yeah, it's nice to, recognize where some of our traditions come from so i mean i know that the uh, cel the celebration of putting up the christmas tree comes from when queen victoria made it the fashion back when she was um queen of england but it's been around on the continent over in europe for many years before we brits picked it up and obviously then the americans picked it up as well so we've had um the weinachenbaum uh, which is the Christmas tree in German, because Weihnachten is uh, Christmas. Again, you feel free to laugh at my pronunciations. Although, funnily enough, I know that in Japan, KFC is the place to go for Christmas. So you get your KFC bucket for Christmas Day. It's very weird for my, my mind, but it works for them. And that's what they do. So sometimes on Christmas, we think about doing... Um, like fried chicken for Christmas dinner, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's all one of those things. Like every year, you get you get told by the the TVs, by the um, the fashions, by the adverts, and all this sort of stuff. You've got to do turkey. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. I know in America, hams are quite a big part of it as well. But um, I don't think hams are all that. I think they're okay. Quite like um, gammon ham when it's done well but I've never really done a ham properly here um, I've had a go at it a couple of times but it's not always worked as well as I'd, I'd have liked but I also know that you know if I practice maybe I'll get it better personal taste and all that everything's permitted so if you have um, like a fried chicken in Japan what else do you think we could have as Christmas traditions what else do you think you'd get away with I've yeah like I say we get all these things about oh you should have the um uh, the turkey I know in America it's more likely to be a goose or something of that nature and in other parts of the world it's you know other you know like roast animals or other um bits of uh you know heavy rich foods I ne I've never liked turkey. I I don't like, you know, the meat. I think it's very dry. I think it's kind of flavourless. Never been overly keen on it. So, now that I'm in charge of my own life, <laughs> to many, in many, many respects, I never have turkey on Christmas because 
I don't like it, unfortunately for me. My husband and my child also don't like it. Sometimes we have it when we go to other members of the family over Christmas or whatever, but for us, turkey is a, is a non-starter. So sometimes we do sort of Japanese style food or we do, quite often we do like a roast duck or we do some pork instead, which is always nice. But as we do pulled pork on Christmas, on New Year's Eve as well, we tend to try to avoid two very large pork dinners. We do do the roast potatoes, we do do the Yorkshire puddings because in this country, if you don't have Yorkshire pudding with a the roast, then what are you doing? But sometimes, for you know, Christmas Eve and things, I have a go at doing some baking of some description. And uh, on occasion, I have made croissants from scratch or I've made um, some other kind of pastries uh, from scratch, which I, I do love doing, but I just don't often get the uh, opportunity to. And I've never done bullion knots before, so this could all go completely wrong for me, but bear with me. Is that going to work? Is it going to work? It's working! Yay! Right, let's try it from here. This is one of the good things about having a longer needle in this case, because you can make your garlands extra long, aren't you? I'm sure I'm getting this all kinds of wrong again, guys. Feel free to tell me. There we go. That's quite nice. Let's see if I can do a longer one down here. Oops, again, sorry, off camera. One of these days I will get it right. <laughs> Yeah, we've got to get Christmas started after Halloween, so I don't know what we're going to do for Halloween. Um, like I say, the Squinks is going to be um, going out trick-or-treating. They've already got their costume all worked out. They want to go as Bill from Gravity Falls because that's the kind of thing that they like to do. Um, but they've changed their, their minds about their... Uh, outfit about 14 times now but uh we shall see if it turns out to be bill on halloween day or halloween night as the case may be right i'm going to do one more of these and i'm going to leave the rest for doing off screen i think i might be going the wrong way with these balloon knots maybe i need to do it going the other way i don't know I will experiment and I will see. Yeah, I think I've been going the wrong way. That's why I've got that little weird tail thing there. But I'm learning. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to leave that there whilst I get on with the next thing. Okay, so I'm on to the last project of the day. I did slightly overshoot with my previous two little tasks. So I'm probably only going to spend 10 minutes or so on this one. But this is some more of the Omori piece you can see down there. I'm going to start doing the black backgrounds now. This area here has a little pattern in it that Squinks wants as a character from the game. And all I'm doing with this one is filling it in with um, sort of chevron patterns like this. I'm not again being too precious about it this is sort of kind of black work sort of kind of not if you know what i mean i'm also aware that with these tightly packed um stitches it's making the fabric pucker a little bit because there is a little bit of elastic in here which is working it against me a tiny bit but i can live with it and again i'm sure you guys can too so this area is going to be very very dark um, and then the rest of it i'm going to fill in with black work patterns properly now i do take some time out using my uh, ruler to draw out these uh this grid because it makes it much easier to work from than by eyeballing it so this area is going to be uh, counted stitches type black work not just me making it up as i go along black work <laughs> there is a very big difference isn't there oh yes hold on my camera is wonky there we go it's a bit better 
Now I could do this very carefully and have these chevrons looking all neat and tidy going across, but I don't want it to look like that. I want it to be a little bit crazy in many ways. I want it to be sort of free form. That's why I'm not worrying too much if the uh, stitches are longer or shorter. They're supposed to be a lot longer than that one, but I'm sure, I'm sure we'll cope, won't we? Yes. And it's kind of awkward doing it in this position because of uh, doing it in front of the camera because I am working at a distance. So I'm finding it slightly difficult to see what I'm doing, but I seem to be doing okay. So having literally just started that, I now need to change my thread in a moment. So I'll do that in just a second. So I'm just going to do a quick, oops, a daisy. Double stitch through there. There is a sashiko stitch, which is very similar to this sort of pattern that I've seen done recently on one of the channels that I follow. I've mentioned them already, the green wrapper. And when I come to doing my more sashiko inspired stitching, I will use that technique rather than this one. But this one, I'm not worrying because it's me making things up again which is always a fun part of the process there we go and i'm gonna get my next thread i swear i'm more organized than i present myself on the screen but uh, you guys can be the judge of that <laughs> so have you got any nice plans for the weekend i just have sewing plans <laughs> to be honest with you sewing and tidying the house nothing very exciting I think I need an outing of some description, but uh, we shall see if that happens sometime in the near future. Let's have a look. Again, this is from the game Amori. This is one of the symbols that keep appearing in the game, but don't look it up. It's something that Squinks has specifically asked me to include because it's a very big part of the, the reveal at the end of the game. So I've done that and it apparently looks really cool as far as Squinks is concerned, but yeah. <laughs> my business is trying to make my, my stitching look decent. Their business is trying to look cool in front of their friends. Isn't that all the ways away? <laughs> yes, anyway. And what else have we got going on? The only thing I asked, put on my list this morning of things to talk about, was talking about Christmas traditions, and I've talked about Christmas traditions and uh, seasonal traditions. Not sure what else I can talk about now. We shall see what happens. What else, guys? What do you... What do you think I should talk about on my um, Friday Fabric Fumbles? I do enjoy talking about the work. I do enjoy talking about this, but there's... Once I'm in the middle of a task, it, gets a bit difficult to um, to keep talking about it because I'll be saying the same thing over and over and over again if that makes sense. And I don't want to bore you. Let's hope I haven't bored you already. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so yeah, you can see it's uh, the thickness of the, the stitching is, is good, but it does create a little bit of puckering because this has a little bit of stretch in it, as you can see there. It's good, but I didn't realise quite how much stretch it had. But uh, I'm sure it'll still look nice when it's finished. I'm also hoping to get some time to do some um, 
reading up on some more of the techniques that I want to use in the new year because as I've mentioned a few times, um, I really want to have a go at doing some, some gold work. So I'm thinking for my birthday, I might buy myself a gold work kit from one of the companies that sells them because I'm very aware that it is not an easy task to do. So I need to get something that will get me used to it first and then I'll spend the money on a project that I'll do solo. Because, yeah, as you can imagine, gold work, in other words, using metallic gold thread to do um, different tasks. It's not, it, it's not even just thread. There's, there's some very different types of thread and things like um, bright check and things like that that have like mottled surfaces to make them extra shiny. It's fascinating, but it's not going to be a cheap one to have a go at. Um, so I need to get myself some materials to try things out, get myself a bit more familiar with it, and then have a go. It's one of those things though, isn't it? It's like it's, the sooner you start finding one form of, of embroidery that interests you, or one form of the fabric and craft that interests you, another two or three pop up their heads. Uh, someone a while ago said to me, oh, I like your drawings. Have you ever thought of doing black work? And I'm like, what's black work? So of course I looked up black work and then once you look up black work, all the links say, well, what about gold work? What about white work? What about this and that and the other? And then they're going, hmm, what about those? They look fascinating. Never done things like cruel work. I want, that same, seems interesting to me. That's more sort of heraldic I think, I kind of feel. Um, but then I'm also now looking at tapestries I'm also looking at doing some weaving and I definitely want to have a go at weaving and I definitely want to have a go at tapestry but I feel like I have to have a project to justify buying all of that equipment if you know what I mean so I've, I've got to have a reason to get it and I have to have something at the end of that process to show people what I, what I can do but the more I do the more interested I'm getting in all the processes. And I think I would like to definitely do more of all of those. And I'm not saying I'm going to be amazing at them the first time I try them, because that's just not how it works. But I'd love to have the time to try these things out. And I still have, as you know, my wall, my Rolex, to start having a go at spinning. And I'm hoping I can have a go at doing that next week. I've been watching Gillian uh, Eve on YouTube and also on Instagram. Um, and her videos on spinning and on weaving and on all these other things. Fascinating. Lots of history, lots of processes, lots of inspiration. It's really worth having a look. Um, but... Uh, I'm trying to get myself familiar with the whole idea of how to do spinning, how to do all this. And it's, again, one of those things where to do it, you've got to do it. Um, but my brain is going, no, you're going to get it all messed up. You're going to all these lovely things that you're going to mess up. But I'm going to have to ignore those and just get on with it. Otherwise, I would never get started, would I? Same as with everything, I guess. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm returning to all these lovely crafts later in my life after. It's, it's a weird one, isn't it? It's like, you know, having people sort of saying, well, little craft is for girls. And obviously for girls at the time was coded as this is a pointless, this is a useless task. This is something that's not actually of any value. Whereas in fact, <laughs> It's the complete opposite. It is a, a lot of value and it's something that, you know, modern society could not live without. If we didn't have clothes, if we didn't have beautiful things around us, what would be the point of carrying on with our lives? That seems a bit dark to me, but you know. But even the fact that if we hadn't have had people doing weaving and sewing and all these sorts of things, we wouldn't have modern computing. We wouldn't, because the original coding um, cards were for the Jacquard loom, um, or the Jacquard loom controls, that control the patterns 
on uh, you know large large looms or large weaving frames and we would not have that without women creating these punch cards and these coded cards to make those patterns work and then um you know even things like you know that the um the space race in america would not have happened if it weren't for uh, women sewing very very carefully the uh, the space suits making sure that they had absolutely no tears no extraneous stitches no nothing that you know could cause a problem nobody thinks about that part side of it they always think it's all to do with the men making these rockets that go up into space and all this sort of stuff but even then you're missing the fact that an awful lot of the coding and a lot of the, the things that made these things work were done by women. It's uh, one of those things, isn't it? But uh, yeah, needle craft, sewing craft, weaving craft, fabric craft, essential for our world, essential for our lives. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't always get recognised as such, which is a shame really, isn't it? Yes, it is. Anyway, um, so I'm going to sign off on that one. I'm going to say it's all done for now. I'll be working on some more of those Christmas card squares next week. And as I say, keep an eye out for the longer project, the crazy quilting project, where this will appear on part of the design. I do like the way that that green works. Oh, I've just noticed there's a little bit of a stitch gone weird over there. Uh, let's have a look. How's that gone like that? Oh, it's caught on there. And I will just tidy that up off screen, I think. How did I miss that, eh? But I will come back to that later and put it on my crazy quilting project. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. It's not been quite so exciting, but it, we are winding down for the next projects in the next few months. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. What kind of things would you have put this onto? Or would you leave, leave it like this as a sampler? Maybe put it into a, a frame or something. And whilst you're down there, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't. And tap that little notification bell so you can keep up with all my projects as they happen. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching again. And bye-bye.